In this video, we'll review some triangle classification from middle school. Recall that you can either classify a triangle by its sides or by its angles. If we choose to classify a triangle by its sides, it falls into one of three different categories. It can either be scalene, meaning none of the sides are congruent, isosceles, meaning that at least two of the sides are congruent, notice that notation at least two, or equilateral, meaning that all of the sides are congruent. Notice that every equilateral triangle is also isosceles because they have at least two congruent sides. Now we can also classify triangles by their angles. An acute triangle is going to be in a, a triangle that has three acute angles. An equiangular triangle is going to be a triangle that has three angles of 60 degrees each. A right triangle is going to be a triangle that contains one right angle and two acute angles that are complementary. And an obtuse triangle is going to be a triangle that contains an obtuse angle with two acute angles. A lot of this, again, should be reviewed from your middle school math. As far as vocab around, surrounding an isosceles triangle, um, the legs of an isosceles triangle are the two congruent pieces. The base is the side that's not necessarily congruent. The vertex angle is going to be the angle that is contained between or included in the two congruent legs. So in this case, our base angle, or sorry, our vertex angle is going to be angle N L M. Our base angles are going to be the two angles that are adjacent to the base. So base angles are angles L N M and angle L M N. An important piece of information you probably recall from middle school is that in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are always congruent. So let's see how we can use this information to solve some problems. In number one, it says find the measure of each of the angles in the isosceles triangles below. I would always recommend starting by finding the vertex angle. In the case of letter A, the vertex angle is that angle whose degree measure is 26. Once I find the vertex angle, by process of elimination, I know the other two are my base angles. Those two each contain the same number of degrees, which I'm going to call x. And then I remember that in, an, in any triangle, the sum of the degrees of the angle measures is always 180. So I can write in a little equation that says x plus x plus 26, the sum of the three angles is 180. So in other words, 2x plus 26 is 180, meaning that 2x is equal to 154 and x is equal to 77. So the two base angles in this triangle, 77 degrees each. I'm going to apply the same idea to letter B. I'm going to find the vertex angle first, and the vertex angle in this isosceles triangle is actually down at the bottom of my triangle, making the remaining two my base angles. I know that one of the base angles has a degree measure of 53, so therefore I know that they both have to be 53. I'm going to label my unknown vertex angle with an X and apply the same principle I used in order to solve example A. The three angles together in a triangle must total 180 degrees. So I'm going to write a little equation that reflects this. So x plus 106 sums up to 180, making the measure of angle x, my vertex angle, 74 degrees. So those are both very middle school -y kinds of concepts. Down in example two, I'm going to apply what I now know to solve something a little bit more complex and a little bit more sophisticated. In example two, they say find the measures of all of the angles in the given triangles. And again, notice that the diagram is significantly more complex. My advice to you is when working with these types of triangles, 
always look at only one triangle at a time. If I were to start by looking at triangle ADC, I have that triangle in which I know absolutely none of the angle measures. So that wouldn't be a very helpful or useful place to start. It was a good try, but it's not going to get me where I need to be. So instead, I'm going to go and I'm going to look at the purple triangle. The purple triangle, triangle ABD is isosceles. The vertex angle is at D. I don't know the measure of the vertex angle, but I do know that one of the base angles measures 32. So the second base, uh, base angle has to measure 32 as well. The vertex angle I'm going to call x. And now I can write an equation for the purple triangle similar to the equations that I wrote in the first example. So the three angles added together must total 180. So the measure of angle x, or my vertex angle, must be 116. If x is 116, then this green base angle over here must be the supplement to 116, or in other words, 64. And if one base angle measures 64 in that red triangle, the other base angle must measure 64 as well. I'm going to call the vertex angle of the red triangle y. I can't use x because x was already in my purple triangle. I need to pick a different variable. So now working within the red triangle, the sum of the three angles, y plus 64 plus 64 must add to 180. And that makes the vertex angle in my red triangle have a degree measure of 52 degrees. So again, slightly more sophisticated in example two, but as long as you recall to only look at one triangle at a time, it'll still be the same basic idea applied over and over again. All right, as always, thank you for the gift of your time. I want you to take some time though, think about what you've seen and heard in this video, and go ahead and summarize the key ideas and important takeaways from the video.